Hello, today I'm going to introduce you a library in C++11 called Chrono. Chrono is a library to deal with time and date. In the past, people have introduced many libraries to deal with time and date. But they all suffer from one problem, which is the precision. At the very beginning, people use seconds to describe time. And as the computer's clock running faster and faster, it has been switched to milliseconds, and then microsecond, and then nanoseconds. And today, we are in need of a picosecond precision to describe time. So the unique thing about the chrono is it is a precision neutral library. No matter what kind of precision you want to use, this library can always satisfy your need. And it does that by separating the duration and time point from the clocks. You will understand what I mean by that. To understand the chrono, there are a few concepts need to be clarified. The first one is clock. What is clock? That sounds like a trivial question. Everybody knows what a clock is. But when it comes to programming, it is not so trivial. Chrono provides three clocks instead of one. The first clock I'm going to talk about is system clock. It's under the namespace of Chrono. System clock tells me the current time according to the system. This is the regular clock you see on the toolbar of your computer. So if I open the change time and date dialog, it shows that my system clock is running. And as you see, the current time according to my system is 12.01. The second clock that Chrono provides is steady clock. Steady clock is a clock that goes at a uniform rate. It always runs at the same speed. So if my steady clock tells me that two hours has passed, then it must be two hours that has passed. You might want to ask, isn't the system clock also running at a uniform rate? The system clock is not. If I open that dialog again, as you see, I can click this change date and time, and I can change the time from 12.02 to 11.02. So if my system clock tells me that two hours has passed, it may or may not be true that two hours has passed. So the system clock is not steady. And we need a steady clock for our programming purpose. The last clock that Chrono provides is high resolution clock. A high resolution clock provides the smallest possible tick period. In practice, Many times, this is just a type def of either system clock or steady clock. But if you need a more higher resolution clock, then this is in the standard that you can implement. The most important attribute of a clock is its frequency, or period. In C++, a clock's frequency, or period, is represented with a ratio. So let's talk a little bit about ratio first. Say I have standard ratio and 1 10. So this is a ratio of 1 tenth. And I can print out this ratio by, print, by printing its numerator and denominator. C out r dot num and then slash and r dot then. And let's run the program. It prints out one tenth. And if I change this to two instead of one and run the program again, it prints out one fifth. So this is what a ratio is. And all the clocks' periods are represented with ratios. So I can print out a clock's period with the same method. 
here I'm printing out the period of my system clock its num numerator and its denominator and let's let's find out what clock what frequency is my system clock running so my system clock's period is 100 nano nanosecond now you understand the clocks let's talk about the second concept the duration chrono has a template class duration to represent time duration how do you represent a time duration say for example I want to represent two hours in this case I need a number two and a unit hours so these are the two things that I need a number and a unit and these are also the two things that the temp cla template class duration needs say I want to instantiate the duration with uh, int and uh, ratio which represents the unit of the time 1 1 this duration can be used to represent number of seconds stored in uh, int note that ratio, ratio 1 1 means a second and these two types are actually the default types for the duration templates duration template I can also create a non-default duration double ratio 61 actually ratio and this can represent number of minutes stored in a double so with duration I can represent a time span with arbitrary precision Chrono also provides some convenient um, type depths nanoseconds, microseconds, milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours these are all predefined duration and you have seen how the minutes is defined over here note that each one of the clock has its own predefined duration for example the system clock has a duration type which is actually a duration of type T with system clock period this type T can be any signed arithmetic type it can be integer, long or any user defined type now let's do some experiment with the duration say I have a chrono microsecond MI and 2700 so, so this is uh, 2700 microseconds then I have a chrono um, nanoseconds and A equal to MI so NA is 2700,000 nanoseconds and now let's say I have a chrono milliseconds mio equal to mi and uh, as you see this actually doesn't compile because I'm converting a duration from a higher resolution to a lower resolution so there will there might be some information lost so to do that I need to use chrono duration cast to specifically cast the microsecond to millisecond chrono millisecond now it compiles so this will give me two milliseconds be careful that the value 
700 microseconds are truncated. It is not rounded, it's truncated. Note that if I'm converting a duration from a lower resolution to a higher resolution, I don't have to use the duration cost. Now if I do mi equal to mu plus mi, and again in this case I don't need uh, the duration cost, and the result is 2000 plus 2700, and the result is 4700. Duration has a member function called count which returns this number. So if I do mi.count, this will give me 2700. And if I do na.count, this will give me 2700,000. Okay, that's enough for today. Next time, we'll finish up the entire Chrono library.